sort of be improved upon by going discrete components. And we were wondering, and Nelson Pass had offered to look into that, and we were wondering if yeah. if you could give you a blessing to that for DIY use. I mean, if it's a DIY, so you're welcome to do whatever you well, like. Well, in, in, <laughs> in, in respect to you also offering the crossover on the LinkFit's Lab website. I mean, yeah, I, it, I, there would be no... Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't... Nobody would be stepping on your toes, so to speak. Oh, I see. You're saying someone is building a crossover and calls it a, an Orion crossover or something? Well, yeah, something... I, I would be a little sensitive maybe right. if you called it Orion, if you want to call it something else. Fine. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Basically, my answer is if, if you... If you do some variation on the team, fine. You know, this, this right. is certainly not the only way to skin this cat, yeah. but uh, just don't call in Orion, you know, it's something else. Um, if we needed your collaboration, could we um, communicate with you through the oh, yeah, Orion yeah. through the Orion users uh, website? Would that I, be a... I, I have to tell you quite frankly, I, I these days I rarely go on and look at uh, these do-it-yourself uh, well, you were there forums. a couple. Of, you were there a couple of weeks ago. I was there a couple of weeks ago. On which forum is it? On the Orion users. Oh, the Orion users group. Mm. Yeah, there I look periodically. I look in there. Right. Yeah. Okay, I misunderstood. No, uh, right. I was talking about two different there's things. There's a DIY. Uh, there are so many different forums there that I, I really don't follow. What what's going on there? Okay. And another question is. Um, I really like electrostatic loudspeakers, and I have listened to the ESL 63s. Yeah. Um, could you elaborate further on what is it an electrostatic needs? How would I minimize the bad effects? You know, if if somebody was building an electrostatic from scratch, what is good about the 63? What's bad about it? <laughs> Make it smaller. <laughs> uh, the, the the tweeter on the ESL 63 is about this size, right? So that's, that's a little bit too big there. Uh, at low frequencies, you can move only so much air with it. And that's just inherent in, in the whole thing. Yeah. They're, they're just, Mother Nature set certain limitations if you want to reproduce sound with an electrostatic. The electrostatic forces are weak, so you need very low mass diaphragms there. It's not that the, the, the low mass and, and speed and all these things are the magic of, of an electrostatic. No, that's just a necessity. Otherwise, you wouldn't get much sound from them. Yeah. Have you heard the new iteration of the quad electrostatic yes, speaker, as, the as brand new one? As a matter of fact, uh, it's a, a local store had, had one of those. I don't exactly. It's a three-digit number. I it think it's a four-digit number now. Is it four right? No, I haven't heard the four-digit number, but the three-digit number, and at that time I had the, the, the Pluto, and I, I had it in my car from some other demo, and I took it in the store, and all the people really well, and I set it up, and they sort of laughed, and uh, what have you done here with these sewer pipes and stuff? And <laughs> And, and then I said, okay, let me just put it here right next to your qu quads there, and, and let's just uh, listen. You pick some music that you like to demo, and, and we turn it on, and pretty soon the sales people came over and said, in particular the one guy, Craig, I know him really well, he said, uh, uh, it's, there's something wrong here. There's something wrong. This, this, is, not, this is not how, how our quads sound like, you know, <laughs> sort of like. Uh, and, and from my observation was the Pluto stood up extremely well, if not, you know, as, at least as good as the, the quads that I heard there. So. Siegfried, I, uh, I have both your loudspeakers at home. Yeah. Um, and I, I agree that, that they, they sound virtually identical, especially as, in my case, they're in different rooms. Um, but the, there is a difference in depth. Now, you, there, there are two differences between these. One, one's a dipole, one's a monopole. Mm -hmm. But the other big difference, uh, as I know, is, uh, is in the cost of the components. Yeah. Um, would you, do you have any idea, would you care to speculate to what extent uh, that difference in, in terms of depth of stereo staging is, is down to 
uh, the monopole dipole difference or, or just simply that the, the, the components in the, in, the, in the Pluto are so much cheaper and you know, the nonlinear distortion is presumably much higher, etc. Well, the, the, my take on that is that the, uh, the, the Pluto, yes, the, the drivers are cheaper there, but they are not bad drivers there, right? They are not of the same distortion performance as the one in the Orion there. But they, they appear to be good enough, you know, whatever that means, good enough. There's sort of a threshold that uh, uh, when you're below that, it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah, but then we're, we're also talking about stage depth that is good enough. For I, I, the, it's, the stage it's depth, the uh, I, don't, I don't know what the reason is for the stage depth. And, and I sometimes wonder whether the, uh, the, the greater stage, stage depth with the uh, uh, Orion, with the dipole, whether that's an illusion, whether that is less realistic than with a monopole. Sometimes I think the monopole is more precise in that, in that respect. When I sort of try to visualize how far were the microphones from the actual sources, it, it may, the dipole may give you an artificial depth, which is not unpleasing because it gives you sense of a larger space there, but it may be a distortion. Yeah, I don't know. I was just going to say, um, one point that strikes me is very similar with the performance of a monopole speaker is that of um, measuring or listening to a speaker in a wall or a true a true baffle. In both cases, you get the the reflection if it's a, a hard solid wall or or baffle. You get the reflections in time all the way through. So you you end up with the same situation as you were describing earlier with the um, the the key things were everything to be in time with each other and consistent in the frequency band. Surely building a speaker a speakers into a wall automatically gives you that. I'm, I'm not sure I followed. There. If, if I build a loudspeaker in the wall here, made it flush with the wall, okay, then the sound emanates from here. There is no reflection, no first reflection. The sound has to hit something else, come back and then get reflected. There is really no, no reflection. It really is a point, a radiating point in the surface here. Yeah, precisely. And, and if one of the key factors in the, uh, what you were saying earlier is avoiding those reflections and the inconsistencies and the changes of them with yeah. boundaries and that sort of thing, surely one of the simplest ways of doing it is build the bugger into the, the wall, then you've killed, the, you've killed that problem at source. Uh. Well, look at it this way. If I have this wall here, there are no, no first reflections coming off the wall. All I get is, is later reflection, floor, ceiling, white, sidewalls, or so. So, as I'm sitting out there, my perceptual system is somehow telling me there's something strange, possibly strange, out here. Because there is all these other things here behave like I would expect for a room. But this thing here is not uh, behaving the same way as a source would behave when I listen to it inside the room. And, and when you said that it takes like 40 minutes to adapt to the situation, I, I think what's happening is a processor here between the ears is saying, uh-huh, this is, but I can handle this. It just takes me a little bit here to, to overcome that. First impression is that it sounds completely flat. Yeah. No image depth. Yeah. And the, and the focus is poor as well. Yeah. So you learn the boundary and its relationship, and that radiation to the rest of the environment. Yeah. yeah. And eventually the acoustic of the recording reappears slowly. Yeah. I, 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 I,